Hi friends, wish you all a very happy and profitable 2024. In 2024, there are two main events that are happening that is going to drive the markets. Number one is elections in India and number two is the decrease in the interest rates in India as well as in US. Now both these things will really send the markets in uncertainty as well as volatility. So what we really need for 2024 is a well diversified portfolio. So in this video I will present to you 10 stocks that are from different sectors as well as from different market caps such as mid cap, small cap and large cap. Before I start the only disclaimer I have is that do not take these stocks as recommendations. Please make some notes and do your own research before you make any investment calls. With that let's get this video started. So the first stock in my list is Wipro. If we have a look at the chart for the last three years, you will notice two big patterns in Wipro's share price movement. Number one is in November 2021, the stock was trading at around 715 levels and it has now corrected to almost by 30 to 40% and now trading at around 470 levels. And also from August, September 2022 onwards, the stock has been consolidating at a range of around 420, 430 levels. But in the month of December, it has started to go up and started to show the signs of bullishness. So the natural question is that why stock has corrected from its all time high and why the stock has been consolidating now. So if you look at the profit and loss of Wipro, you will see that in last three years, the revenues have grown up from 15,000 crores to only 22,000 crores. That is a CAGR of close to 13% only. But if you look at the net profits, it has gone from 2,400 crores to 2,600 crores only in the last three years. That is a CAGR of only 3%. That explains that why the stock has seen a sharp correction. Now in my view, the stock has bottomed out at the levels of 400 and also 2024, there is going to be a strong momentum in this stock because of couple of reasons that I want to explain to you. So if I come back here and have a look at the page 15 of their earnings call, you will see that in the Q2 of 2023-2024, their bookings was at $3.8 billion, which is up by 6%. And that has been the trend in the last two to three quarters where the company is seeing the healthy order book, right? More importantly, the large deals that you see has been booked at $1.3 billion, which is 80% growth, right? Now, in the next four to six quarters, we are likely to see these orders making improvement in their revenues. Q3 and Q4 of this year might not be great, but 2024 Q1 and Q2 in my view is likely to see some good growth in their revenues. Also, if you look at the operating cash flow, it is at 145% of their net income. But if I go to their earnings presentation, and look at the commentary that their management is providing, you will see that their booking in total contract value has been solid over the last quarter. But the main challenge for the company remains the discretionary spending in the consulting side of their business and that remains the key risk. But in 2024, that is likely to become an opportunity from the risk because what is likely to happen in 2024 is that in the US, Fed rates are going to go down and what that means is that the borrowings is going to be become easier for many companies in US. So therefore, they are likely to spend more into the consulting side of the IT because consulting is considered as a discretionary spend when it comes to companies IT spending, right? So from that perspective, 2024 is likely to give a better view in my view from Wipro's stock perspective. Anyways, it has bottomed out in the last 18 months as we saw in the chart here in the last 18 months you see pretty much consolidated here and in my view it is ready to give good returns in 2024 not a stock recommendation for you but this is what i can see from their fundamentals perspective as well as from technicals perspective so far if you're liking this video humble request for you to hit the like button share it with your friends and family so that more and more people can understand a lot about stock market the second stock in my list is geo financials another large cap stock i did a full video on geo financials you can go and watch that video but let me play 30 seconds clip from that video for you to understand the business model of geo financials this video will give you a perspective whether geo financial services is going to be hype or it is going to be multi-bagger and i'll present you data so that you make the decision what you see on my screen is the business divisions that geo financial services is going to have as per their quarterly results that they have published very recently simply put geo financials you can imagine being a big merger of few big companies including number one bajaj finance in the nbfc sector Number two, Policy Bazaar in the insurance sector. Number three, Paytm for the payment services. And number four, SBI mutual funds in the AMC businesses. If these four companies merge together, something like Geo Financial will get created. Now in 2024, Geo Financial's business model is going to take some shape 
For example, in August 2023, they applied for an insurance license in the non-life category. And if in 2024, they get this license, what is going to happen is that is going to be a very positive news for the company. And that is going to have some positive uplift in their share prices. Secondly, from price discovery perspective, Geo Financials was listed at 265 per share. But if we see in the last few months, it has sort of found 230 as a consolidation level or the price that at which it is hanging about. So in my view, that is a good price at which it is going to retain. And also let's not forget that Geo Financials hold 6% stake in Reliance Industries. So from that perspective, 230 seems to be a price that at which the stock is consolidating right now. Lastly, from a consumer loan perspective, 2023, they started a pilot only in their 300 stores. In 2024, they are likely to ramp up their loans business. And in my view, that is going to see some revenues and profitability coming into Geo Financials books. And that will have a positive impact in their share prices as well. The key risk on Geo Financials remains the regulatory aspect because the company has to deal with multiple regulators such as RBI, SEBI, IRDI, and it is extremely hard to navigate through all these regulatory challenges. Therefore, that risk always remains with Geo Financials. Let me now move to my stock number three, which is from pharma sector, which is Gujarat Hemis Biasan Limited, GTBL. This is a small cap stock and I did a full video on this stock. Please go and watch that. You will understand why I keep talking about this stock because this is one of the very few pharmaceutical companies in India that produces fermentation based products right and why i like this company as such is because of the numbers you see eps growth last three years 36 percent last five years 71 percent last seven years 43 percent also i attend their quarterly investor calls and the last quarterly investor call that i attended i created a summary on my youtube member community you can consider joining my youtube member community if you want to get periodic updates on companies like gtbl but the key point that i want you to understand is point number four which is they are coming up with the new API block and that is going to impact positively their revenues in the month of July onwards next year and that is going to give company a slightly more growth than their normal growth and this is what I am really waiting for for this company to pick up. Let me quickly play one minute clip from the video I did so that you understand the business model of this company. Let me now present you the business mode of this company. So GTBL manufactures APIs. What are APIs? APIs are active pharmaceutical ingredients. For example, paracetamol is one of the APIs of Dolo. Now GTBL currently makes two key APIs. Number one is Rifa S and number two is Rifa O. So Rifa S is the intermediate for rifampicin that is used to cure TB and leprosy. While Rifa O is the intermediate for rifaximine which is used to cure diarrhea and irritable bowel syndromes. Now extremely important point is that these both ingredients are actually fermentation based and there are very very few companies in India that produces fermentation based pharmaceutical products. In fact many companies have tried to enter into fermentation based manufacturing in the past and have failed miserably. So from that perspective GTBL has a competitive advantage. Also GTBL is constantly increasing their fermentation capacity. In fact, by end of 2024, they will have additional fermentation based capacity being introduced into their plant, which makes this company very, very attractive from a business mode perspective. This is their competitive advantage against all other pharmaceutical companies. The key risk with this company always remains what WHO comes up with in terms of the guidelines and the products that this company is making if they all of a sudden do not recommend the ingredients that this company is making then of course there is going to be a loss in the revenues and therefore the share prices may come down so that risk always remains with this company fourth stock in my list is from renewable sector and the company's name is sjvn limited renewable sector is a sunrise industry by 2023 india wants to meet 50% of its energy needs from renewable sources. Now, if you look at the PNL of SJVN, you will see that from March 2013 onwards, the company has not grown a lot from sales perspective as well as from profits perspective. In fact, the compounded sales growth in the last three years is only 3%, while the profit growth has been minus 1%. So what is it that makes me really positive about this company? If you read the page four of their earnings presentation, you will notice that SJVN has been designated as Renewable Energy Implementation Agency by Government of India. There are only four such companies in India. What this simply means is that they are going to do the barter between the demand and the supply of the power coming from renewable sector. And if you go to page five of their earnings presentation, you will notice that the company is projecting close to 4,000 crores of pure profit from this work stream coming in the next 
four to five years. Now, if we see their profit run rate is around 1200 crores every year. And if they are going to get this pure additional profit of 4000 crores in the next four to five years, in my view, their profit are almost going to be doubled by the time they reach 29, 2030. Therefore, from 2024's perspective, this company is looking really, really good. What are the two key risks from this company's perspective? Number one is this is highly dependent on monsoon because the quantity of the water in the river is what decides how much of power this company is going to generate. And if there is low water, then the company is not going to generate a lot of power. That means the revenues and profits might see a fall. The second risk is the power tariffs that are decided by the Ministry of Power, not by the company. So if they decide to lower the power tariffs, then it is likely to impact the profits of this company. So that is also the risk that the company carries but in my view in 2024 the company is going to do much better than what it did in 2023 so far if you're liking this video humble request for you to hit the like button share it with your friends and family so that more and more people can understand a lot about stock market also you can consider subscribing to my youtube member community if you want to learn a lot about stock market let us now move to stock number five which is hdfc bank so if you look at hdfc bank's performance in the last one year the stock has not performed well. It's been a really, really bad year from share market perspective for HDFC Bank. It has given close to 5% returns in the last one year. And it was only for the December month that in the last one month, the return was around 10%. Otherwise, it would have made losses from a returns perspective. Now, what makes me really positive about HDFC Bank in 2024? If you look at their post-merger Q2 numbers, they are looking very, very good. In fact, if you look at net interest income, it has gone up by 30%. Net profit gone up by 50%. Total advances gone up by 57%. If you look at other numbers as well, fees up by 20% roughly. Total deposits up by 29% and so on and so forth. If you look at the net interest margin at 3.6%, albeit lower than what HDFC Bank used to be at around 4.1%. But gross NPA is 1.34%. CASA is looking very good, 38%. So all the pains of merger is behind HDFC Bank now and the company is going to now look at the synergies of this merger. So for example, if I talk about synergies here, one of the very, very important aspect of merger is HDFC's mortgage loan book that is coming to HDFC Bank now. Because of this, what happens is that the bank is now going to sell a lot of other products and services to the same customers. And that brings me to the cross-selling point here. If you look at from a cross-selling perspective right now, HDFC Bank now has total 91 million customers and they are now ready to cross sell some of their products. So for example, they can sell insurance to these 91 million customers, right? They can sell mutual funds to these 91 million customers. They can sell the mortgage business to 91 million customers. So the power of the merger is going to now be seen in 2024, 2025, 2026 and so on. So overall, in my view, HDFC Bank is going to do much better in 2024 than 2023. But the key risk with HDFC Bank still remains the regulatory environment because as we saw last year in around September, October, RBI said that they need to increase ICR, incremental cash reserve ratio, by roughly 10%. So the banks like HDFC had to keep 10% more liquidity to be able to cater to ICR. And therefore, there was some dip in their net interest margins, right? So again, those challenges are there sector-wise. That is why I keep telling people that you got to have well-diversified portfolio because you don't know what's going to happen in a particular sector, right? So overall, HDFC Bank, from my perspective, remains positive in 2024. Let me know what is your view on HDFC Bank for 2024. Would love to read your comments. With that, let us move to stock number six, a company called Sterling Tools Limited. It is into auto sector. What does this company actually do? So let me show you that this company manufactures fasteners like standard fasteners, special fasteners, etc. And they deliver it to the auto companies like of Maruti, Mahindra and Mahindra and so on. Also, the second business that they are into is more interesting, which is if I come and show you, which is Sterling G-Tech E-Mobility Limited. It's the largest MCU manufacturer in India. MCU is a component that is used in the EV vehicles. So from that perspective, the company is now manufacturing MCU, but they do not manufacture it themselves. They import parts of it from China, a company called GTEC, and then they integrate it, assemble it, and then sell it to the Indian automotive sector. So from Chinese perspective, there is always a risk that if that agreement that they have with GTEC has a turbulence, then the company may not perform well. But if I come back and show you their PNL, you see in the last one year, the revenues have seen a very good growth from 510 crores to 772 crores. Also, the profits in the last one year has almost doubled from 26 crores to 48 crores, right? But what makes me really optimistic about this company is if you go and read the page four of their management commentary, you will see that their SGEM, the subsidiary that I talked about, the MCU business has seen 
111% revenue growth in the business. It is more or less like a monopoly business because not many companies in India are manufacturing MCUs that are needed for EV vehicles. Also, if you look at the share prices, you will notice that from May 2023 onwards, pretty much the price has been consolidating at roughly 350, 360 level. So from that perspective, there has not been much return in the last few months. So hopefully in 2024, it is going to give better returns. From a shareholding patterns perspective, also if you see the promoters are holding close to 60% stake and that has been consistent in the last three years. So feels to me that promoters have a good conviction in the company as well. What are the risks with this company? Number one is the steel prices. If you see page four, steel prices in the last two quarters have been softening globally. So that is a good thing. But again, this is a cyclical business. And if the steel prices all of a sudden in 2024 goes up, then we are going to see impact in their profitability. The second risk that I already narrated was around the GTEC and the MCU manufacturing that they have with China. And that might have some impact in the profit but all in all in my view in 2024 because of the ev growth that the company is going to see it is possibly going to do much better than 2023 so hopefully we will see good returns in 2024 not a stock recommendation but if you're liking my way of thinking let me know in the comments a simple thank you and also hit the like button on this video. Let's move to stock number seven, which is Page Industries Limited. Why I like this company is because of very high ROC number, very high ROE number. And overall, in the last few years, the company has been doing really, really well. But if you look at the chart pattern of this company, you will notice that in the last three years, it has corrected very, very sharply. So if you look at September 2022, it used to be trading at 53,000 rupees per share. And it has come down to almost 37,000 per share in the last few quarters, right? Now, what has led to this correction? So if you have a look at numbers, you will notice that from September 2022 onwards, which was the case here in the chart, from September 22 onwards, if you go and have a look at their revenues and profits, you will notice that there has been slight degrowth, in fact. It's been very, very flat quarters as well as some degrowth. Likewise is the case in the net profits as well. It's not growing very high. And if I go and read what is going on in the company is you read page number three on their earnings presentation call. What their management is saying is that the demand in the inner wear and athlete wear has come down. It has been subdued demand, right? And I've been thinking about reflecting on why this is happening. And one of the key reasons that I think is happening is because of the high EMIs for home loans. So just to put this in context, RBI from May 2022 to Feb 2023 have increased the repo rate by 2.5%. And what that has done is that it has made the home loan EMIs increased by almost 20%. Now, when this happens, Page Industry is operating at a premium sector, selling brands like Jockey in terms of underwear and all. What is likely to happen is that people are going to be very tight on their expenditure. It's a consumer driven demand. And therefore that company in the last four to five quarters have seen very, very flat returns in terms of the revenue and also some degrowth in their profits. Now, what is likely to happen in 2024, in my view, is that RBI is going to cut the interest rate, right? And that will ease the pressure on the home loan EMIs. And in my view, that is where the demand might get resurrected in 2024. And the stock might start to give better returns. And anyways, I can see that it has been consolidating in the last few months in 38,000 level. So it is not going to drop any further in my view. And we might see some good positive news coming from Page Industries in 2020. Again, not a recommendation for you to consider this stock, but please do your own full fundamental analysis on all these stocks that I'm talking about. And if you're liking this video, please hit the like button. Let's move to stock number eight. It is a small cap stock from infrastructure space. The company's name is Wellspun Enterprises Limited. And this company, if I show you, it is a part of Wellspun Group, which is 2.7 billion US dollar group. And this company is basically in the road and water sector, right? Now, if I look at this company's PNL account, you will see from March 2022 to 2023, in a year, the revenues have almost doubled. And from a profitability perspective, if you see, it has gone up almost by five times, 126 crore to 726 crores, right? So company in the last one year is seeing phenomenal growth. And that is what really makes me positive about this company. If you look at the shareholding pattern of this company, it has gone up from 50% from a promoter's perspective to 54%. So the promoters have been buying the stakes. Also, if you go and read their page number seven of their earnings presentation, you will see that they have acquired recently a company called Michigan Engineers, which is an expert in 
tunneling, right? And this is where they are adding this into their assets and digging the tunnels is a very, very complex sort of an operation. And having this Michigan company in their bucket is going to add into the revenues and profitability. Also, if you look at the order book, this is the key point here that you need to understand. Page 15, you will see that their order book right now is at 91 billion rupees. So 1 billion rupees is 100 crores multiply by 91, it comes out to be 9,100 crores rupees of order book. These are the confirmed orders. Now their yearly revenues right now is at around 3,000 and they have an order book of 9,000 crores already, meaning that they already have pretty much three times of their revenues as the order book done and dusted. That is why I like this company. It is a fundamentally good company from my perspective. What is the risk in this company? Again, from a risk perspective, it's a small cap company. And also when you're investing in any of the infrastructure based companies, one bad project, one bad news in the market that Falana and Dikana flyover has gone down or collapse or whatever and it was constructed by Wellspan for example that might take the share prices to the bottom that is the risk that you always carry in such companies but overall in my view 2024 it is going to see good results from Wellspan's perspective not a stock recommendation a big disclaimer let's move to stock number nine which is JSW infrastructure limited Jindal Group's company I used to work for Jindal Group in fact my first job uh, in Jindal Group back around 16 years ago so this company I did a detailed post in my YouTube member community and let me run you through that what you will see here is that if you look at the revenue growth between 2020 and 2023 Adani Ports has grown by 29% CAGR while JSW Infra grown by 41% CAGR from a net profit perspective 3% Adani JSW Infra 62% very very high growth from a net profit perspective installed capacity at the ports if you see JSW Infra 13% versus Adani 10% and Gujarat Pipa have 0% growth in traffic handled if you see JSW Infra 43% Adani 17% overall fundamentally I like this company because it is handling the ports in much better way than Adani ports and also if I show you their Q2 results you will see here that their total revenues are up by 29% year on year their EBITDA is up by 30 three percent year on year and their pat is up by close to 85 percent year on year and that is why i like this company fundamentally very very strong company the only problem i find with this company is that if you look at the share prices i think it was listed at around 119 rupees per share as an issue price when the ipo came in 2023 it is still trading at 208 rupees level so it is trading at 75 percent premium of the issue price so i'm hoping that the prices will soften in the few more weeks in my view in 2024 and 2025 company is likely to much much better because of potential growth that i am seeing right now in 2023 not a stock recommendation please do a full fundamental analysis so that you understand whether this company is good for your portfolio or not let's move to the last stock stock number 10 i'm not going to tell you the stock number 10 what I really want from you is let me know in the comments any stock that you would like to add into this list or your favorite stock for 2024. Let me know in the comments. I would love to read your comments. Secondly, you can also consider joining my YouTube member community. You will find the link in the description. Lastly, if you like this video, let me know a simple thank you in the comments and hit the like button. It will motivate me to come up with such more videos. A lot of research has gone into these 10 stocks in the last few months and I hope you liked this video. If you did, let me know in the comments and I will see you in my next video. Until then, keep rocking.